What's going on YouTube? This is Doug with Life is Shirty. I got another sales update for you today. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I wanted to show you my seller hub right now. So uh, I think last time I said I wanted to keep get this number up to about 2,000 for the last 31 days. I'm not quite there. But as you can see, I have greatly improved my sales because I've been grinding, I've been listing, I've been sourcing, I've been taking pictures, I've been uh, very active on eBay the past couple of weeks, and I've increased my sales 177.8%. So that is fantastic in my mind, and I'm on my way to that 2,000 for the last 31 days. And here at the bottom, you can see my traffic has improved. My traffic has really, everything was, uh, I believe, in the red. Uh, the last video I did for you guys and as you can see it's all in the green now uh, the listing impressions the click throughs the page views are all up and that's because I'm listing I'm actively listing every day so make sure you try to list something every day so let's say if you have and this is just a little tip too actually so let's say if you have uh, 20 pictures taken you need to do 20 listings uh, unless you just uh, have a goal of a certain day to do a certain amount of listings in one day, try to spread those listings out uh, and do them once every other day. Make be active several times during that week, or maybe do uh, you know four days, five listings a piece. That's kind of what I do. I usually try to do about uh, eight to ten listings a day, and that's been pretty successful for me. So right away, I want to uh, <clears throat> get into this because I did like a, a sales and fails on one of my videos, and I'm going to show you a couple of fails. And I don't know why this one failed. Actually, this is a vintage uh, Woolrich jacket from the 1980s, and I thought this would do really well. It's been in my store for about a year, and uh, I finally had it down to $21.99 plus shipping, uh, and recently I put uh, best offers on everything. And somebody made me an offer of $14.99 plus shipping. Uh, so uh, I got this one out of here for $14.99 plus $6.10 shipping. Now, usually I won't accept an offer that low or something, but I mean, it's kind of like any thrift store you go to where the longer the items have been there, the more they're marked down. I, well, that's kind of how I viewed it. I mean, this is the first time in a year somebody's shown interest in this particular jacket. So I went ahead and accepted the offer and I got it out of here. Um, it's a great jacket though. I have no idea why it didn't sell for the amount of money I wanted to sell it for. I wanted to sell it for around $50 and we can see uh, clearly that that did not work. Next is a Tommy Hilfiger uh, Dry Fit Renaissance Bank Polo. This is a fail. <clears throat> um, now in one of my previous videos, uh, I believe my golf shirt videos, you know, showing you some golf shirts that sell. I mentioned that golf shirt with company names on them sell really well. And this was a Tommy Hilfiger uh, New With Tags golf shirt. Now, I don't know how famous or worldwide uh, Renaissance Bank is, but, uh, I mean, this has been in my store for about a year and a half. <clears throat> and uh, somebody offered me um, an offer of $11.99, I believe. So I accepted it and got it out of here. It's been, it. I've had it, like, Twenty nine ninety nine, twenty five. I've you know gone down, down, down. Uh, so what I learned from this, if I am going to pick a polo shirt, and I'm, I'm probably not going to go the route of polo shirts anymore, ones like this anyway. But if you're going to go the route of a polo shirt and you're going to have a company name on it, make sure it's a well known company. Like I sold a couple of Terminex Under Armour shirts uh, like that uh, because they had Terminex on, and we know Terminex is you know, multi, multi-millionaire company, and I've sold stuff with, like, SunTrust Bank on it and stuff like that. But, so make sure you get really well-known companies if you're going to do shirts like this. So uh, in my book, this was a fail to me uh, because Renaissance Bank, I don't know if they're regional or what, they just did not do well. <clears throat> so <clears throat> on to the good sales. I'm sorry, I'm clearing my throat a little bit here, but on to the good sales. Now, um... This was a hat that I, I picked quite a while ago. So I'm sure everybody watching this right now and uh, has at one time or another had a stack or a box or a tub of stuff that needs to get listed. And it's been over there for quite some time. Well, I had a bunch of hats that needed to be listed. And I've probably had them for six or eight months in a tub. I'm not picking hats like this anymore uh, just because it's my personal preference. 
but this one did very well. <clears throat> I accepted an offer of $21 uh, plus $5.99 shipping for this particular hat. Next uh, is uh, Olympics are right around the corner. Uh, so a vintage 1996 Atlanta Olympics uh, sweatshirt. Um, and what gives a leg up on some of these items is uh, the 50 cotton, 50 polyester. Um, if you got a vintage shirt and it's 50-50 cotton polyester, <clears throat> then it's already got a leg up on uh, the rest of the shirts that they're looking at. They want that 50 cotton, 50 poly. With that being said, this shirt sold at full asking price, $30 plus $5.99 shipping. Uh, so great return there. And I think I paid uh, $2 for the sweatshirt. Next, here's my brand again, Peter Millar. Uh, this is one of the dress shirt slash polo shirt brands I will always buy when I see them. It is on my list to buy, buy, buy. <clears throat> but a Peter Millar, uh, this was a short sleeve plaid pink button up shirt. And uh, I listed it for $30 for best offer. I accepted an offer of $24, I believe. And the buyer paid shipping. So good return there as well. So Peter Millar, uh, always keep your eye on. Make sure it's nice though. Make sure the collar's real neat and not crinkled. And you know how one side of the collar can look nice sometimes and the other's kind of bent and it's got a crease. Make sure the collar's real nice because these are very expensive shirts. A brand new Peter Millar uh, polo shirt or a shirt like this is around $90 to $100, maybe a little bit more. So uh, you got to make sure they're they're really nice and uh, everything is intact um, with the shirt. So be careful with that if you're going to buy Peter Millar. Next is kind of a fun shirt. I saw this. I got it for a dollar one day. Um, I had free shipping on it. The buyer um, paid twenty dollars full asking price, and it's just an Alan Jackson uh, concert T-shirt from 1996. And it's got the little fringes at the bottom, like a little cowgirl. So uh, I had this in my store for about three months, and someone finally uh, pulled the trigger on it. Next is a brand that was uh, really popular in the 90s, like a skateboarding uh, brand of clothes, uh, Stussy, S-T-U-S-S-Y, Stussy. So if you ever see any Stussy shirts, go ahead and pick them up because they're going to sell well. And here's the tag from the 90s. This is mid to late 90s right here. Uh, the 90s Stussy usually sells better, but if you're picking t-shirts, Stussy's always a good one. They're a popular, real trendy brand, and uh, they will probably do really well for you. So this particular shirt, uh, I had a best offer on it, but the buyer paid full asking price, $25 plus $3.99 shipping. And it's funny because I turned down an offer uh, for uh, 12 or 15 Somebody offered me like $15 for it uh, just the day before. And I had gone back and offered him uh, $21, and he didn't respond. And then the next day, somebody purchased it at full asking price. Different buyer. So good sell there. I got the shirt for a dollar. Next, I've started picking Hard Rock Cafe t-shirts. Uh, I'm probably not going to anymore because, honestly, they haven't done that well. Uh, this particular one did. Um Hard Rock Cafe Tokyo. Uh, I don't know if it's vintage or not. Actually, uh, I'm questioning whether or not this one's even authentic. So, and I learned that it may not be like after the fact. You know, I, I read a post somewhere on Facebook where somebody posted a Hard Rock Cafe T-shirt, and um, their eBay got suspended for selling false merchandise. Um, but looking at this tag, it does not look like a legit Hard Rock Cafe tag. So, uh, to the buyer. I apologize, but uh, this was a really well-made T-shirt. It still could be authentic if I'm, you know, I could be wrong. Uh, but the buyer paid full asking price, twenty dollars plus three ninety-nine shipping, and I paid a dollar for the T-shirt. <clears throat> Next, if you watched my previous video, um, my vintage T-shirt haul and like the the all the concert T-shirts that I'm going to be selling real soon, uh, I featured this one in that video this is from the 1980s uh, 50 cotton 50 polyester t-shirt it just has a funny 
thing on the front, official Tennessee hillbilly. And it's got some little sayings on here with a man and his dog smoking a pipe, holding a shotgun. So, well, not a shotgun, but whatever. Uh, so, just a cool, funny shirt. Um, this one got a lot of attention really quick for some reason. I think I accepted a best offer of $25 plus $3.99 shipping. It was in my store for about three days. And I paid a dollar for this t-shirt as well. Next, um, I kind of been experimenting with blank vintage t-shirts, plain green. Uh, and here's a good example of one of those. Um, this was from the early uh, 90s. Uh, it's Hanes. Just a green, plain, blank t-shirt. And if you see here, it sold for $15 plus $3.99 shipping. So people are buying these, and I've sold a couple. I think there's another one here in a few minutes. Um, so the, the vintage plain blank t-shirts, there's not a lot of money in it, but it still is a good return. Um, I've upped the prices on a couple of them that I have in my store just to see if people will bite at those. I'm trying to see how far I can go with it. But still, that's a really cool experiment I've been doing. And uh, this one sold for $15 plus $3.99 shipping. Here's another brand you need to look out for, whether it be polo shirts, dress shirts, t-shirts, but Southern Tide. Um, I don't know how far this brand goes, but in the South, it's a really preppy, trendy uh, brand of clothes. It always has the little skipjack fish on it. Um, and this one had some other uh, graphics on the back, Southern Tide Game Fish Series. Uh, I had it listed for $25. Plus three ninety nine shipping. I think I accepted an offer of twenty dollars plus three ninety nine shipping. And again, I paid a dollar for the shirt. So try not to pay more than a dollar for my t shirts unless I'm at uh, Goodwill. They're a dollar ninety nine at Goodwill, <clears throat> but I usually get a lot of my t shirts at uh, Salvation Army on half off day, and they're almost always a uh, dollar. Next, I was in a thrift store I wasn't very familiar with with this one. And I saw this hat sitting to the side for 50 cents. And I picked it up. And it had the East Carolina Pirates 1995 Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, the hat was in perfect condition. It doesn't look like it's ever been worn. Uh, <clears throat> so I thought it was a great vintage hat to put in my store and see if somebody uh, would like to keep it for some memorabilia. And I accepted a best offer of $25 plus $5.99 shipping. So good return there. It paid 50 cents for the hat. Next, uh, man, if, if people are still selling jackets in, in the thrift stores in the summertime, go through them and see if you can find some of these vintage 90s windbreakers. And I've had great luck with Adidas, Reebok, and Nike windbreakers. I have one in my store right now up for $35 as well, and there's like seven watchers on it. So a lot of people are paying attention to it. This one sold for full asking price, $35 plus $6.10 shipping. So here's that 90s Nike tag, and it's kind of layered here in the front. <clears throat> Got zip and buttons, really cool jacket. People uh, are, are loving these old windbreakers still. And the crazier the colors, some of them have some really crazy colors. And the crazier the colors are, uh, the more you can uh, up them. I think in one of my videos I showed where I sold a Reebok windbreaker. It has some crazy colors on it for like $65. So uh, that's something else to look out for. <clears throat> Next is just a vintage 90s t-shirt. It said Mount Rushmore on it. I just want to show you this because, I mean, these are, I mean, people probably pass by these a million times at thrift stores and uh, there is somebody very clearly that wanted this shirt for $19.99 plus free shipping. I hear my dog making noises over there. But uh, yeah, the Mount Rushmore uh, shirt, it has some little sparkly stuff on it. I uh, disclosed that in the in the listing and I paid a dollar for this and it sold for $19.99 uh, plus free shipping. So uh, these type of shirts, you got to look out for them, look out for the tags, see if they're from the 80s, see if they're from the 90s. Uh, I might not buy one if it's got like a Gildan, a recent Gildan tag or something like that. Uh, I'm really into the vintage right now. Speaking of vintage, this is from the 90s and it's a Snapple t-shirt. 
So everybody loves Snapple. And I saw the uh, the Fruit of the Loom, the best tag. This this black Fruit of the Loom best is a 90s tag. So I don't know the exact date of the 90s, but this is uh, early to mid 90s. Uh, this Snapple shirt is. So I picked it up. It's 50 cotton, 50 poly, which is thumbs up in my book and for the uh, vintage t-shirt world. And it sold at full asking price, $21 plus $2.99 shipping. And uh, I think I underestimated the shipping on that one. This was a bigger shirt. I think it cost like $3.60 to ship. But anyway, good sale. Next, uh, this is from the 80s, uh, 80s Reebok. Let me show you the 80s Reebok tag. There you go. So I saw that tag and I immediately knew it was older. So I did my research. It's from the 80s. Uh, this had a couple little stains on it, I believe, but it's very lightweight, paper thin, uh, 50 cotton, 50 poly, and it sold for $30 plus free shipping. So, you know, that's why I say, you know, know your tags or, uh, you know, do your research in the store maybe. But I knew this tag was a little bit older and I wanted to take it home and do some research. I only paid a dollar for it. Uh, you see some fading, a little bit of stains right there, but, uh, that soft t-shirt, that soft vintage t-shirt, people don't care. So, good return here, $30 plus free shipping. Now, here's my last uh, t-shirt I want to show you. So, I believe in my last sales video, I let you guys peep at this uh, plain white blank t-shirt from the 70s that I had um, on an auction. And it had a couple bids on it, I believe. Well, uh, it was sold. And it was paid for, and it's been shipped out. Uh, it had 12 bids on it. Winning bid was $21 uh, plus $2.99 shipping. So you see here, it's got a, it's got a tag. And this is very clearly from the 70s. It's even got stains on it. It's got like green stains on it. So this is a very good sell, uh, very good experiment too. So I'll always be uh, looking for these now. Um, so just look out for the tags if you just feel something's older um, you know get it if it's a dollar bring it home do your research and uh, you might luck up a little bit so much like uh, my last sales video that I did when I let you peep at this shirt I'm gonna let you peep at another one my girlfriend actually picked this shirt uh, she knew it was older she wasn't sure how old um, but she picked this vintage um, I mean, I don't know if it's from the 70s or the 80s. Um, I'm pretty sure that is a 70s Sears tag, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, looking and doing my research, I found several Sears uh, undershirts that had this tag. And as you can see, it's very, very thin, very, very thin. Uh, and it even has a couple of runs in it. And I also spread it out like that with my fingers so you can see how thin it is. Um, but I have it listed right now on auction. I was doing another experiment for $2.99 shipping, and it has three bids up to uh, $3.25 at the moment. It's got three days and 16 hours left on the auction, and if I'm not mistaken, there's five watchers right now. So we might have a very similar result to this T-shirt that we did, the last plain T-shirt that I put up, and... Um, really hoping uh, I do get the same result because I would love to you know find these little uh, needles in the haystack so to speak because so many of these just plain t-shirts are looked over and left and that's fine I'll go find them and I'll pick them and I'll get fifteen twenty dollars for them no problem so uh, not too many people are buying these at the thrift store unless you are a vintage t-shirt uh, picker so uh, well that's my sales update for uh, the past couple of weeks I have made more sales than this but you know these are the ones that I found maybe kind of interesting and that I think could really help you uh, when you go out uh, sourcing so another thing I've been doing is I've been spending my money better I've been uh, really picky when I go uh, sourcing and I'm hoping it's really gonna pay off so um, I might have a video up soon uh, discussing that. I think I said that in my last sales video, um, but I really do plan on doing it real soon. But anyway, thanks again for tuning in, 
And uh, again, thanks everybody that's been contacting me on social media. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. Uh, those are the three I'm the most active on. And uh, thanks to all the new subscribers. Thanks for people who have been commenting. And uh, like, comment, and subscribe for me. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.